Okay, all the crew members are going to take a, a couple moments uh, to sp uh, talk about a couple different days each on the mission. And uh, you can see right after, uh, actually before we launched and uh, right after we launched, this is what the space station used to look like, uh, asymmetrical as you can see. And here's our three uh, anxiously awaiting crew members, uh, Sonny Williams on the left there. Uh, the night before, when they rolled the RSS back, this shuttle is really a beautiful sight uh, with the lights on it. Uh, just gorgeous. Uh, day of launch, we're all marching out to the crew transport vehicle. Uh, the, the entire crew of six, inclu or, or excuse me, seven, including Clay, our uh, rotating ISS crew member. First one in the cockpit is always the commander, and there's our commander, Rick Sturko, getting uh, uh, situated in his seat real quickly. And uh, on the mid deck at the same time is JR. And here's myself climbing up uh, next to uh, the commander as I'm getting in. Atlanta, launch director. Go ahead, sir. Okay, CJ, it took us a little while to get to this point, but uh, the ship's in great shape. It was a beautiful weather day for you out there, so good luck and Godspeed. We'll see you back here in about 12 days or so. Launch Director uh, Mike Landau. And the beanie cap is going away. It's this time here, CJ. And, uh, yep, let's do it. We're go. Norm Nice. Booster concurrence. Working with his booster. I'm go. 15 seconds before uh, launch, you'll see the uh, water deluge starting right there. And six seconds prior to launch, the main engine starts. Things get real quiet after those solid rocket boosters leave us. Those are only with us about two minutes and five seconds. They get us to 150,000 feet in Mach 5. And here you can see right after our main engine cutoff, about eight and a half minutes into flight, uh, we jettison the external tank. Right away, uh, Pat and Danny get uh, going in a, in a hurry to try and videotape the uh, external tank for uh, downlinking uh, that imagery to the uh, control center. Still on flight day one, right after, uh, right after that moment, you see a, a, uh, a whole uh, slew of activities going on. Uh, Danny's in charge of the photo TV equipment. I'm helping him out there with some of the uh, cameras we're going to use the next day. Uh, Steve Swanson here in charge of the computers, getting a, a whole host of uh, laptops ready. Uh, the commander, Rick Sturko, going over the timeline, making sure we didn't miss any critical activities. And down in the uh, mid-deck, uh, J.R. Riley in charge of the mid-deck, working with our uh, rotating crew mem uh, ISS member, Clay Anderson, getting the mid-deck in order. We open the payload bay doors right quick after uh, we get to uh, orbit. And then uh, we uh, still on flight day one take the uh, robotic arm on and give that a check out. It was uh, during this check out that Pat Forrester's, uh, you can see Pat and myself working on the robotic arm, but during this check out Pat Forrester's uh, sharp eye caught an eye of the uh, little bit of terror we had in the Ohms plank and he got a good shot for the emission control using the uh, camera on the robotic arm. We got that downlinked in a hurry. Flight day two, we took the uh, uh, OBSS, the survey, the, the uh, boom that we used to do was survey the uh, leading edges of the wings, make sure we didn't get any other damage during uh, ascent. And here we're uh, at the end of flight day two, about five and a half hours later of, uh, of that survey, we uh, go ahead and put the uh, OBSS boom back in its place. At the end of flight day two, we had an ohms burn, and that we, you can see that. And here we're going to flight day three. The big challenge for the space shuttles as soon as it leaves the launch pad is to try and catch up with the space station. So a series of burns are conducted, which uh, bring us closer and closer to the space station, catching it 200-some-odd uh, miles above the surface of the Earth. And here you can see as we approach, if we get a first visual on the space station at about uh, six miles out, and um, as we get closer in, it gives us the opportunity to do a, a pitch maneuver and allows the on-orbit crew of the International Space Station to shoot uh, various uh, photography and uh, video of the underbelly of the orbiter, also to verify that uh, the launch was indeed clean and that we had no uh, secondary damage associated with that launch. And here you can see the, uh, it, it's, it's a pretty awesome sight coming to the space station, seeing all this uh, hardware hanging out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, certainly is very impressive, but uh, it just, even as you get in closer, it just doesn't look right. 
uh, as we approach the final phases of docking, uh, it really becomes very impressive and you realize that uh, things are really going to happen very quickly. And uh, here, this is not exactly to, to the proper speed, speed it up a little bit to kind of make things go, but you can see the, the awesomeness of uh, the actual sequence. Uh, CJ flew an absolutely perfect, picture perfect uh, um, rendezvous uh, to the space station. And once we docked, we get right down to business after a quick pressure check of the vestibule is to open up the hatches and see our crew members, new crew members inside. There's uh, Fyodor, Oleg, and Sonny. And needless to say, all of us were happy uh, to finally get to this point. And it's part of a tradition that uh, once we get on and uh, dispense with the, uh, the immediate greetings is to present the honorable crew with a small gift. In this case, it was a, 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 a T-shirt. And uh, once we finally got on orbit, one of the first things we had to do on flight day three, this was a pretty busy day for uh, everybody on board. Pat and, uh, and Brew were responsible for taking the handoff, and Pat's going to take the, the truss, which was the heaviest element of the space station so far, lifted to orbit, lifted out of the payload bay with the robotic arm on the shuttle, and then they're going to do a handoff uh, between the shuttle arm and the station robotic arm. And here you see Brew and uh, Sonny getting that uh, in place and ready to do the handoff on flight day three. And while they're doing that, uh, Danny and I are heading to the airlock to get all of our equipment ready for the EVA, which we're going to do on the next day and start hooking all this stuff up. And here in the uh, animation, you can see what Brew and uh, Sonny were doing when they took the handoff with the station arm, is to put this thing in position. Once it was in place the next day, and here you see uh, Clay in the background, Oleg on the right, and, and Brew in the middle. Uh, they're going to bring this thing into position where the automated bolting could take place that was critical before Danny and I could go outside. Down in the lower left, you can see the KU antenna moving on board the space shuttle uh, as they were moving that up. In the meantime, uh, on flight day four, Danny on the left, me on the right, with uh, help from Sonny and Swanee, are uh, getting ready to go out and do the first EVA on flight day four. And here you see us coming out of the hatch of the uh, airlock. And uh, here's Danny coming out for his first uh, first spacewalk. Our job was to put to, would be to uh, connect the uh, primary and secondary power cables and all the data cables, which uh, bring the S3, S4 truss to life. Uh, deploy the solar arrays, get them ready to uh, to deploy fully, deploy the panels the next day, and also uh, release the radiator, which you see moving here. And the folks that uh, got an award today, Janella Humans and Chris Schmidt, were instrumental in helping us get this, uh, this device installed. And here you see us getting ready for the deploy. And as you can see, it's a full team effort. We've got everybody in the station there getting ready to deploy the arrays, as you see here. And uh, it was a beautiful sight to see these things uh, come out on uh, flight day five. We've got both arrays are about 240 feet uh, long. and. Uh, of course, all the help we had from folks on the ground, you see here, uh, Kelly Beck was a flight director on that flight. Once we had those deployed, it was time to retract uh, the 2B array, and it was a real team effort also. You saw Sonny was uh, running the computer, CJ was kind of running the show with the cameras and the microphone, and then uh, we had JR and Danny, or excuse me, on this first one on EVA2, it was Swanee and myself were out there. This is uh, some of the helmet video where we had to cut a leader off before we could fold this thing up, a spring that had broken loose. And here was the team inside, JR, running the show as IV. We got a little bit more retracted on that second e EVA than we thought. Uh, there we are uh, at the end of that particular portion. I'm on the boom on the right, and, and Swanee's there on the mass canister. Uh, anyway, we're going to finish that up on EVA 3. And there's JR on the arm, this time on the left and Danny on the mass canister. And they spent several hours out there. And as you can see, their work was rewarded by the fact that we were able to completely retract that solar ray. Uh, there's CJ making some of the final calls. And there's uh, Sonny, very happy with uh, what we were able to accomplish. So that was a little bit of EVA 2 and 3. Uh, there were some other things that we did on that third EVA. And of course, one of them was to repair the uh, torn ohms blanket. We did a little practice inside. That was uh, Danny practicing with the circle stapler. And then we put him on the uh, shuttle arm with uh, Brew and Swanee flying that. And we sent him out there. Here's some of his helmet video uh, as he gets out in place and gets ready to fold that piece of blanket down. He did a great job. The first thing he did was push it in place. And then using that stapler that you saw him practicing with inside, uh, did a great job of uh, using that surgical stapler. 
Uh, there's Megan MacArthur and uh, Kelly down in the control room and Keith uh, giving instructions and uh, checking on things. Once he had it stapled, Danny used some pins to keep it in place on reentry. Uh, there was the team inside, uh, CJ and Brew, and then myself as IV. Uh, while he was, uh, while Danny was working on that, we had JR busy working on another piece of equipment just above the uh, shuttle. So you could see he was just feet away from us outside, uh, and he was installing an H2 vent. And this was the uh, external portion uh, of a system that was going to allow us to use an oxygen generator, uh, which we'll need as we go to a crew of six. Uh, right after he had completed that, Clay and Sonny got to work inside in the lab and hooked up the rest of that uh, portion internally so that the oxygen generator would work. Uh, we moved on to EBA-4 on flight day 10. That was uh, Swanee doing some work. There we are both bringing in a uh, keel pin as we clean the uh, path that the MT or the mobile transporter would move along uh, that path with a robotic arm. So we, uh, at the end of EVA-4, had completed all the tasks that the crew had gone up to do, and it was time to come in. That was a great day. It was uh, Father's Day, a Sunday afternoon, and uh, we had accomplished the EVA mission that we had gone up to do, so we were uh, very happy with that. Uh, once we were inside, uh, they would open the hatch, bring us in, and get us out of the suits. Uh, there's Swanee there on the left, and uh, I'm on the right. Uh, the team was in there uh, once again to get us out of the suits and greet us. The next couple of minutes are about daily life on the station and the shuttle. Here, Sonny and I are uh, rotating a rack on a node so she can get behind there and do some work. Here's Clay and Sonny and Brew transferring items from the station to the shuttle. You can see it's a little easier in the zero-G environment. Also part of our uh, daily regime would be to work out. Here I am on the red on the station. And JR's on the bike with the silver shoes. Sonny had a little problem uh, reading the directions on the bike, but it still worked well. <laughs> of course, eating was a big deal every day. This is a uh, wonderful shrimp cocktail. Three ounces of cold water, hit the button, fills it up, wait about 10 to 15 minutes, and you have a meal. And of course, with any meal on the uh, board there, you have to play with it first. <laughs> still tastes good. As you can tell, too, uh, not only was playing with your food allowed, it was encouraged. And here, Danny is working on a little experiment, two different colors of fluid, making them come together. And next, Pat is going to work on the infamous space eyeball swallowing trick. And near the end of our mission, we had the honor to put on our patch on the node wall. And then have a wonderful meal over in the SM. We all enjoyed the Russian food tremendously. And again, playing with food was part of the item. <laughs> Finger looking good. Every night, we all had a little spot where we hooked up our sleeping bag. We'd crawl in or slide on in zip it up and put on our Dr. Locke eye blinds and head off to sleep. Each morning was pretty hectic. We all had our daily uh, morning routines to go through. Here we are. We first started off from even brushing your teeth. And of course, going to the bathroom is next. And Rob, yes, we did learn how to do this correctly. Here, Danny's showing us how. I think we can all figure out what goes there <laughs> and what that's for. <laughs> okay, uh, we have to take this to schools too and that's what all the school kids want to know about. <laughs> Just one last view of the uh, space station. It was time to say goodbye to uh, Fyodor and Oleg and Clay. They're still up there. Uh, doing great work on the space station. 
Sunny had this uh, streamer she had to swap out, and then she had to swap out her uh, patch with, uh, put Clay's patch up there on the uh, forward uh, bulkhead where you go out of the uh, lab. We said goodbye to Fyodor, closed the hatches, and then we undocked from the uh, space station. Brew was at the controls for this part of the mission, and uh, he flew the uh, space shuttle straight out the uh, corridor, actually hugging the bottom just a little bit because that's where the best place to fly is, and he backed us uh, smoothly away. Meanwhile, we were taking pictures of the exterior of the space station as soon as the uh, sun came up. Pat wanted to get a picture for the uh, montages that we give all the folks that looks just like this, which is just like our patch. So we uh, Brew had to delay just a minute on the V-bar till the sun got just right uh, so Pat could shoot the perfect picture. And it turned out well, it was worth the effort. So a few item entries we have to type into the uh, shuttle computers with the uh, jets. And here's, uh, here's the uh, station looking nice and symmetrical, as I mentioned earlier. We uh, even had it flying behind us for a while. I could see it back there clearly, so we did a little yaw uh, manual maneuver of the uh, shuttle to kick it across the tail so everybody could see it. Then before we knew it, it was time to come home, close the uh, payload bay doors. And uh, we uh, had cold soaked the uh, orbiter the night before, so the crew was very happy, uh, but very cold, so that was good. Here's uh, some of the suiting up activities. The first thing you do, uh, this is not necessarily in order, but uh, the first thing you do is put your G suit on, and then you uh, get into the uh, what we call the pumpkin suits. Nice orange suit, and you'll see uh, Sonny's head popping out here in a minute. She was the most excited, of course, because she'd been off planet Earth for six months, so she was really happy about going home. Then you need to put on a uh, harness, and then uh, finally you're ready to go uh, get strapped in uh, to get ready to come home. Here we are, the burn kicking off. That's a timer floating in the middle. Now watch what happens when that burn kicks off. It just accelerates from the uh, dual arms engine, the orbit burn. And uh, then the next thing we know, we're hitting the atmosphere. You can see a little bit of the uh, plasma uh, in the overhead windows here as Pat's uh, shining a camera on the cockpit. Okay, here's the Mach meter. I was telling you you're going to see this for sure. There's uh, going up 24.99 and 25.0. So that's it. Already we can feel the uh, gravity coming in. That's about 0.6 G, so it's not falling at 1 G yet. And before we know it, we are looking at the uh, deserts of California and making a uh, right hack into runway uh, 22 at Edwards. Shuttle flies very nicely. It's very much like our uh, shuttle training aircraft. When you roll out on final, it uh, feels very similar. Fly about uh, 300 knots on final, and then uh, Brew put the gear down about 300 feet, just a little higher than that. My wife made a comment that she thought he waited a little long on that, but it was. we checked the numbers. It was perfect. Came in uh, 300 on final, shooting a touchdown just below uh, 200 knots. And then Brew put the uh, shootout, and we did the uh, derotation. It was a hot day at Edwards when we landed. It had been a uh, 107 degrees the day before, and it was approaching that uh, by the time we got out there. Rolling out on final, of course, your helmet. Uh, you've been up there floating around for a couple weeks, and your helmet uh, feels, even your head feels pretty uh, heavy by that point. So we brought it to a stop, trying to get it right on center line. Doesn't matter if you land on center line. Atlantis, we'll stop. Atlantis, Houston, copy, we'll stop. Welcome back. What matters is when you take the picture after the landing, it's, it's still sitting on the center line. So we got out and took some pictures with it. Here's the uh, crew uh, with all the folks meeting us out there. And then we did a walk around, and we checked out uh, the Ohm's pod repair. And again, our congratulations to the team. It held on there perfectly. Well, we're uh, well along on the uh, station assembly sequence. Uh, many more good missions in front of us. Uh, it's going to be very exciting to watch this. Uh, it's going to be a really first-class laboratory that everybody in here can be very proud that they worked on it. Our crew is really proud. They did a great job on this video. And I thank you uh, for being a great audience.